Tammy Nicole and Fifi show here on YouTube. And for those of you who are new to us, we are a dynamic mother and daughter duo, and we discuss all things love, life, relationships, and pop culture here on our YouTube channel from both the millennial perspective and the Generation X perspective. Now, I'm Sammy Nicole. This is Fifi. And what are we going to be talking about tonight, Mom? Well, we're just going to talk about, I guess, um, when you're in a relationship and you get pregnant, it seems like the man, when once the baby comes, the man always wants to uh, leave, or switch up, or act different, acts up during the pregnancy. You know, once you get pregnant. Yep. Especially if you're not married. Especially if you're not married. Um, I, I just think. I don't know if they have the fear that a baby is coming and things are going to pressure, sure. things are going to change. Things are going to change. And this is not all relationships, but it usually, like, when the, yeah, when the baby comes, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like I'm not getting no attention. You know, the baby's getting all the attention. And I, mean, I think I read somewhere that that's normal for most men. To get a little jealous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it went from just being y'all two to now this baby. And a baby changes things. A baby is a big responsibility. I mean, I mean, it's like you're not getting the rest you used to get, you know, when you have a newborn. I mean, you're tired. You're trying to balance life, work. You know whatever else you have going on and then still keep your relationship spicy still have dates go out on dates you gotta find a babysitter i mean you know and it, it can be a lot it could put a strain on the relationship if you're not mature enough and don't know how to balance it mm -hmm. so what was your experience like like having me you were married i was married, had but, but it what still was it, like? it still was uh a, a strain you know i had to balance work i mean i didn't i didn't go back to work until you was like almost maybe two months but it, it still was a you know balance work getting you up in the morning although you went to daycare where your dad worked mm -hmm. you actually went to the daycare where he worked so that made it easier we didn't have to drop you off and go to our jobs mm -hmm. he you would just ride into work with him and then I would pick you up. So that kind of helped out. But still, it still was a big adjustment. Just, you know, with the newborn sleep deprived. Mm -hmm. And you were four pounds and 16 ounces. So you was preemie. not too far from a preemie. They was, you say preemie. So you were feeding like every two hours. So it, it was trying to go to work, you know, and trying to make sure you had everything that you needed. So it, it can be a lot. For a couple it can be a lie married or not married but I think it's important that everybody plays their role the, the both parents it's not just on the mother to get up get the baby ready get the get the bottles ready get the diaper bag ready I think everybody needs to play a role especially if both parents are working outside of the household I think everybody needs to you know play a role because it can get overwhelming it really can get overwhelming mm -hmm. I think for me I just from what I've seen like some of my friends experience I do feel like once they once they had their baby their relationship changed like I feel like they're you know their partners started acting up a little bit maybe once they got pregnant you know things mm -hmm. just started to change a little bit maybe once it started to sink in that it's real and I have a responsibility and I have a child on the way especially for my friends I noticed who weren't already married prior to conceiving their child it seemed like up until they got pregnant the relationship was great everything was good but as soon as they got pregnant and gave birth after they gave birth a lot of times their relationships didn't last you know and maybe they, they were dealing with postpartum depression or hormones them during their pregnancy yeah. mood swings and their partners just didn't know how to handle it and so that oh, they didn't know that they was experiencing it postpartum. because i think that postpartum has just come to the front people are just not mm -hmm. acknowledging mm -hmm. it as it being a, something mm -hmm. that a real thing you know yeah, it's a real thing mm -hmm. and i think that's probably 
been one of the problems that we just didn't realize we were experiencing it. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to treat it or deal with it. Mm -hmm. So that can put a strain on your relationship too as well. You know, the man just don't want to deal with it. But they, they feeling like, okay, you know, I don't know how to deal with it. But I think it takes a level of maturity too. It does. And you gotta know who you have your children you by too. That's something we don't by. always do. We don't really take the time out to think about who are we sharing our womb with? Who are we procreating with? That's why I always say protect your womb at all costs, ladies. But we, I think, we can't afford to not be yeah. intentional or selective about who we share our wounds with. But it just seems like as soon as you get pregnant, you just start cutting up. Yeah, I think, yeah. I not think, all men, but... Not all men. And I think, uh, to go back to what you asked me, how did I do it? I think your dad was had more patience and, and dealing with it more so than I did. Because just then, it was just overwhelming for me. I mean, because, like I said, you were feeding every two hours, and I was getting up, and I was just exhausted. I, I can remember, like, taking my phone. That, back then, we had landline phones. I took my taking my phone off the hook. I mean, you know, I had to, I tried to sleep when you slept. You know, your, your dad was working, but you know, when he would come home, he would help. But it was, it, it's a lot having a baby. I know it looks cute, you know, you see people, you know, on Instagram pushing the strollers. You know, with the cute little outfits. outfits. But when that baby get, get sick in the middle of the night, get colic and crying and you know, you got to get up and go to work at six, or that baby got a bad cold or ear infection, and you, you got to be late for work, got to take the baby to the pediatrician, the baby got a fever of 103. <coughs> and, you know, it, it can be a lot. If you're not level-headed, and if you, know, if you don't know how to handle stuff like that, you know, it's easy for somebody to say, I can't do this. You know, I don't want to be bothered with this. It takes a selfish person to do that. Say okay, just walk away from the relationship and say okay, you know, it's the relationship is not the same. We got this baby now, and you know, we're not doing the things that we used to do. Right. You know, this baby is putting a strain on the relationship, and I don't want to deal with it no more. You know, I think that's selfish. It is. It is. Yeah, it's selfish. I don't want to be in the same household with the baby. I'll just take care of the baby and take care of my responsibility. And, you know, you just walk away from your child. That's selfish. It is. That's selfish. And I think, and like you said, it happens, you know, it happens a lot. All the time. You have couples who think they're just so in love and it's so strong. Mm -hmm. And it's like, as soon as they have that baby, it's like, it really starts to set in. You, mm -hmm. you start to really see how each other deal with stress and yep. being sleep deprived and baby being sick. annoyed. And yeah. Gotta take the baby to the daycare. Who's gonna make the sacrifice? Who's gonna yeah. make the sacrifice? Who's gonna, who's gonna stay home with the baby? Right. You at work, the sitter calling, the babysitter calling, the baby got diarrhea. Yeah. The, ba the baby this the, I mean that comes with all with being a parent and, you, and like you said it's a sacrifice having yeah. children is a sacrifice it's a blessing yeah. I believe that children are blessings I don't believe in any mistakes I believe all children are blessings from God and that you make sacrifices for your kids and you do what you have to do mm -hmm. And it, it gets better as they get older. It gets better, but it's, you know. A sacrifice nonetheless. It's a sacrifice. And you have to be mature and level-headed to deal with that. You just can't be the selfish person in the relationship or the parents say, you know, I don't want to deal with this. You get up with the baby. The baby crying. I've seen that, yeah. The baby crying. Go I've go get the baby that. a bottle. It's just as much as your baby. Or as laying, you know, or letting the baby lay down and you prop the bottle in the baby mouth and the baby get colic. <laughs> Come on, young people. We and have then got, you wonder why. The and baby then you wonder, through. right? Yeah. You wonder why. Well, the baby got air in his tummy and he got gas. You a holler too, right? You know, so it's just a lot of things that you have to consider when you have children, right? It's, it's yeah. a lot. It's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So that's what we wanted to talk talk about about just having children. Um, who makes the sacrifice and why? How it changes the dynamics, dynamics of the relationship. Mm -hmm. 
the dynamics of the relationship. So, okay. so do you think it's important for people to do you have you ever heard of baby moon where people go on vacations like prior to the woman giving birth so they can have that last few couple of weeks or days I never to spend heard of baby time moon. together it's like a honeymoon but it's just time for the couple mom and dad to spend together before mm. the baby comes so they can kind of you know have that last food raw of like what no life is like prior to the baby so they can still keep their relationship strong yeah but it takes more than a baby mom of course it does but those are just some of the things i'm saying you can do to help yeah you really because you still want to maintain that relationship between you two so you can remember that y'all are a team yeah that's and it's true. not you against them that's true because you know i've heard i've actually heard some men say you know they belong to their mama from from newborn up until two. After they turn two, then I take care. I take over then. <laughs> what? Yeah, I heard some men say that. Oh wow! You know, they 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 belong to their mama until newborn until two. Then after they turn two, I take over then. Mm. Who said that? <laughs> like Portia, who said that? <laughs> who said that? <laughs> you know, just all kind of crazy stuff. Just I think ignorant. parenting is a team effort. Mm -hmm. I think both parents should be involved. And, you know, it's yeah, everybody needs to get up in the middle of the night. Both right. parents need Don't to be share. Petty. Don't, you know, everybody need to get up and spend that time because that's bonding time when your baby is young. Everybody the needs, man needs to bond, too. The man needs to bond, too. And, and you can do skin to skin contact yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everybody needs to have that, you know, have that relationship with their child. Mm -hmm. Because they grow up so fast. They really do. I blink my eyes and you're wrong. So, they don't stay little for long. <laughs> so, I, you know, I hope men are just not walking away. I, I would hope that it would be less that walk away from their babies and let the mom have total responsibility. But we see that happen a lot, especially in our community, especially with like young parents. It just seems like the young couples, they so in love, back to what I was saying earlier. As soon as that baby get here, it's like the young man and, and the young lady, they just not able to keep it together. They're not able to maintain their relationship and for whatever sad, reason. For whatever reason, and that's sad. That's kind of sad. It really is. That. The dynamics change. Not to say it's a child's fault, but it's the two individuals involved. It's the two they don't know how to adjust. Because it's a big adjustment. Having children is a big adjustment. And I would advise, if, you, if you're the type that don't want to sacrifice, if you're the type that don't like sharing <laughs> your time and your money and all of that. Are you? I feel like you're coming for me. Don't have children. Just don't have them. Yo, it's just yo, that I feel like she's throwing shade but at me for some reason, but okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just saying. You know I don't want kids right now. I wouldn't advise you to have any. Mm-mm. Uh, mm -mm, that's a lot. Mm -mm. Still don't stuff I'm trying to... I don't, don't do it. I don't want to even... Don't do it. At this time, I don't even want to date nobody with no kids at this time. <laughs> well, at least you honest. <laughs> Because that's a lot. That's a lot. And you, you in that age where you can find a partner that doesn't have kids, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of young, successful black men out there that don't have kids, right? Yeah. So you have that option. You still have that option. You still in that age range. Mm -hmm. You're close to thirty, though. And it's still thirty. 40s and up, they don't have kids, so who has grown yeah, kids, true. so it's not. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I just don't want to date nobody with no small kids. Yeah. Because you'll never be able to come first. That's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Self, selfish. Y'all <laughs> see what I said? Selfish. selfish. That's being honest. You I don't selfish think that don't like to share. Don't have kids. I don't think it's being don't selfish. Do it. I think that's me being honest and being real with myself. I want to be a priority, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
It's nothing wrong with it, but when men, kids men, are involved, you're not going to be the priority, Samantha. Right. That's, and I respect that. That's why I don't want to date nobody with kids anymore. Okay. That's how you solve that. Yeah. Don't do it then. I wouldn't advise you to do it. I won't. I just don't. You're not ready for kids because you still the Me Too movement. It's all about me. Oh, don't say Me Too because that's well, like the other movement. She ain't mean it like that. I ain't mean it like that, but it's all about her. Y'all know what I mean. So how about you? That's wrong to say that. No. We'll mean it in that content. In that content, y'all. I know it's a lot of petty people out there. Not in that content. Trying to flag our videos. Yes. But all about her. Samantha said it about her. She has the only child syndrome. How many out there has the only child syndrome? And proud of it. I don't feel no type. I don't feel. I mean, I'm just walking in my truth, y'all. Yeah. I'm just walking in my truth. I'm being honest with myself and those around me about what I want. Yeah. I'm very clear. I, yeah. Very okay. decisive. But yeah, go ahead. I would say to all my millennials out there that's in relationships, that's dating, you guys wait and have children. It's. I mean, you can wait. You know, be in your relationships for a few years, get to know one another, enjoy one another. I was married for about five, six years before I had Samantha. So, you know, get get to know one another, enjoy your relationship, enjoy your marriage or whatever. And you know get. your partner. And know your partner. Try to have a strong And have conversations yes. about kids. We have kids. Communicate. Okay. Right. Who going to do this? Who going to do this? Who going to take the baby to the day? I mean, all those little things. Who's going to move? But what you going to do? You know, you will, okay, well, who going to put the baby on the insurance? Or, you know, all of that's important. Mm-hmm. All of that's important. The baby got to be taken care of. The baby got to have insurance. The baby got to go to the pediatrician. Patricia, who gonna buy the Pampers? Who are we gonna breastfeed or are we gonna buy formula? Mm-hmm. Who's gonna keep the baby? Are you gonna be a stay-at-home mom? Are you gonna have a babysitter, an in-house babysitter, a nanny? Mm-hmm. Are you gonna take the baby to the daycare? Who's gonna pay for daycare? All of these things you need to have a conversation about before you have children. Before you have children. It's just that simple. Yep. I or don't agree. have them. Don't have them. I just don't have them. Mm-hmm. You know, we're in a time now. You, there's things you can do not to have children. <laughs> and I'm saying this to my young African-American millennials because it is so important not to have all of these children. And then the kids get here and they're in single parent households. They don't have both of their parents. They may be not get the things that they deserve to have because they don't have both of their parents together um, to come together financially to make things. I think it's just selfish. It is. I think it's selfish. I think it's selfish. I think it's, it's wrong to have a lot of children and not be able to provide a lifestyle for them. For them. Mm-hmm. I think it's selfish. I just don't do it. Yeah. Just don't have children. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you have all these kids and you know you know that you like a nice car and you deprive your kids because you can't buy your nice car and take care of them so you go get your nice car. Mm-hmm. Then the kids look in a hot mess or they can't, you know, like it's summertime. You know, you want to be able to put your kids in summer camp or take them on a vacation or do things with your kids. But you know, you go out and have all these kids and you know, you're not with their dad, or you know, you're not with their mom, and you know, then the kids they suffer because they don't get the things, just little things, you know. So just don't do it. Yeah. And while you're young, just make smart decisions. Just don't do it. Be mindful about who you share your seed with. Be mindful about who you share your womb with. Because even when I was a young woman, I I never wanted a, a lot of children. Mom was good enough for me because I wanted to be able to provide for her. And she wanted to be able to still shop. And shop. And, you know, and to be honest with you, even when she got grown, and I was like, okay, I ain't got to spend my money no more. I ain't got to share no more with her. Well, I'm good. Oh, you see where I get my selfishness from? Y'all. I was like, sharing? Man, she ain't gotta, trying to share. I ain't got to share. I ain't got to get her see, hair done. Her. And I ain't got to get my hair done. <laughs> I can just get my nails done. I can just go get my nails done. <laughs> but 
Yeah, it happens. It I can just buy me a purse? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's just that easy. Just don't have one. Mm. Just don't have them. Or know, like Samantha said, know who you having them by. Yes, please. Yeah. Know who you sharing your gene pool with. Yeah. Don't be out here just having a baby by any old body. Yes, I think you're going to trap a man. Yes. That don't work no it more. It never works. This is a whole totally. Man. Millennials are different. Yeah, that don't work no more for y'all. Yeah. Trapping a man with a baby don't work no more. Maybe in the <laughs> 40s and 30s. But, mm -mm. Yeah. No. Okay, so. Yeah, so let us know what you think. Like, do you think the relationship changes once a woman gets pregnant or after the baby is born? The dynamics in the relationship. If so, do you think it changed more so for the good or for the bad? Um, if you think it's for the good, what do you think makes it change for the good? Or if you think it changes for the worse, what do you make? What do you think is the cause behind that? All right. So let us know down in the comment section. And as always, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And on that note, I'm Sam Nicole. This is Fifi for the Sam and Nicole and Fifi Show. Bye.